of July, everybody. Today's video and tomorrow's video that are both independence themed are not your classic red, white, and blue with stars and stripes nailer design. Today is actually Wonder Woman. Absolutely would not have to be worn just for Independence Day or just in the United States, but I thought it would be appropriate. And definitely come back for tomorrow's. It is a real showstopper, so I hope you see it, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye! We are going to begin with a thin overlay of a shimmery light blue acrylic over the entire background. The hard thing with Wonder Woman is because if you want to stick with like the red, white, and blue color combination, especially if you're doing it for the 4th of July, you kind of don't want to stray from that uh, that color scheme and there's those colors are all in her outfit so instead of choosing a red a white or a blue that are exactly like what is in her clothing choose one that's a little bit different so in my case i went with a lighter shade of blue than the really rich royal blue that is otherwise present in her clothing so when you're picking your color just try to keep that in mind that you don't want it to match exactly after we have that done, we're going to encapsulate it, file it into shape, and now we can actually start sculpting our Wonder Woman. So I'm going to take a nude shade of acrylic, and I'm going to begin just slowly starting to find all of her, all of her different shapes and start. I like to start in the middle. Depending on the character, sometimes I like to start with a head and then kind of work my way down. It depends on what I feel like the prominent element is of the character. And for Wonder Woman, it just, you know, typically you'd say the face, whatever the character is, their face is the most important for her. I actually think it is her clothing. So I'm going to start with her body in the middle and I have kind of mapped out where everything is going to go in my brain. So I know where to, where to place them, how big to place them. But to me, if for some reason her, the top of her hair gets cut off a little bit, I'm okay with that, but I'd really hate for her clothing to get missed in any way. So I wanted to start in the middle with her torso and then kind of work my way down and work my way back up. When I am sculpting in all of these beginning shapes I am going to try to build in some of her muscles especially like in her legs make sure that she looks very toned very muscular she's a superhero so she should look strong and buff basically is what I'm going for so as you're sculpting in the different shapes I like to start out with just a thin base layer kind of like what you can see over her body right now and then with with the extra layers and the new new spaces slowly work in those different those different muscle groups into into all the shapes that you're sculpting after i have her legs done i'm going to go back through and work on building up her torso a little bit more adding some more thickness and again working on getting some of that muscle tone one thing to keep in mind is especially like over her abs it doesn't you don't have to actually sculpt in individual abdominal muscles you can just kind of glaze over it because she's going to have an outfit over the top so they won't show anyway but if they were to show you would want to sculpt those in same thing with her arms make sure that you kind of just build in some of that muscle tone anytime you have a character that has some very significant shape whether it you know whether it be like ursula that she's got um fat rolls or something like um, Wonder Woman where she's got this strong muscle tone you want to sculpt those in you don't want to just leave that flat you want to make sure that you have as much of that shape and that texture and those contours as you can possibly sculpt in now depending on your skill level that either can be something that you're like oh yeah of course I would do that or it might be something that's a little bit daunting possibly even scary the thing to keep in mind is that even if you do just a little bit, you just kind of hint at it. Then the next time maybe you do a little bit more, the next time you do a little bit more, and you kind of ease yourself into it. I would never suggest anybody to just never go swimming and dive into the deep end. If this is the first time you've sculpted a character, keep it a little simpler. You don't have to go to the extent as I'm doing. If you didn't want to sculpt in her clavicle like that, you certainly wouldn't have to. For me, I like adding all of those little extra details as much as I can just because I think they add. So if that is something that is within, you know, within your realm of what your, what your comfort zone is, that is great. My, so one thing I like to say, or one thing that I like to do is I like to push people or I like to push myself and I like to encourage people outside their comfort zone. So if you have a comfort zone and you've always been within it and you've always done things that are within it, you're never going to be able to do things outside that comfort zone. That's a pretty basic standard thought process that a lot of artists have. Some people like to just say, you know, do it, just go and just step out jump out leap two feet outside the comfort zone and I I do that to myself <laughs> all the time I make myself do things I don't want to do just because I know it'll help me however not everybody is comfortable with that and if you hear people saying that and you're just like oh my goodness I could never do that and it actually will just like shrink you back into that into that happy little place where you know you're confident in your skills then don't jump two feet outside your comfort zone because if anything it'll deter your from doing anything outside your comfort zone. So just inch your way out from the middle. Kind of play around on the edges of your comfort zone. 
And then that comfort zone is going to broaden and it's going to be slow and it's going to be progressive and it's going to be step by step. But that is so much better than than retreating into your turtle shell. You need to just try, just test the waters, just see how it goes. And if, you know, you're somebody that's never painted a human face, that was always my big thing. I hated painting, sculpting, anything with a human face. If that is what, you know, what terrifies you, if that's the word you want to think, well, if that's what scares you, then don't start with a human face. Start with an animal face or start with just lips or start with just eyes. Start with something. And if after a while you get comfortable with that, then you can broaden broaden your horizon and eventually hopefully with some perseverance everything will just seem to to kind of fall into place and I know that it's like I said it's not it's quick and that's one of the another thing that can seem kind of kind of just daunting is that if you know a process is going to be long it can be hard to get started and I I I agree wholeheartedly. I 100% can follow along with that. So if you, if that's the case and you're like, oh, it's just going to be so long. Take a picture of your work now. Take a picture of your work in a month. Take a picture of your work in six months, a year, and see how much you progress. If it's something you're passionate about, even if you don't push yourself outside your comfort zone and you just keep doing what you're doing, eventually that comfort zone will broaden on its own. But if you want to push it, you know, I personally think it's a great idea and just do it within a way that is healthy for you. So we've got all of our all of our sculpting done on our Wonder Woman. I definitely went down a rabbit hole of self encouragement there. I hope it helped somebody, anybody. Um, and then after we have that, we've got her hair sculpted, her her headband. Is that what it is? Somebody help me. Somebody help me in the description box or in the comment section. Um, then I'm going to take acrylic paint and I'm going to be adding the gold detailing to her outfit to the front, across the top, across the bodice. Add a little bit of like a belt between the red and the blue and then on the blue add the stars so depending on the era that you look at wonder woman from some of these little details are different so if you want to represent a very specific wonder woman from a certain era then you're going to want to replicate those details from that time frame some of them had stars just like a few stars across the shorts some of them were completely covered and you know just kind of do whatever you you know whatever your favorite is however it works out and then across the top across her front and the chest there were also some different some subtle differences in the patterning and the way that that was laid out. So if you have a certain Wonder Woman in mind, then you're going to want to grab some reference photos from that actress or that era, and then you can do it exactly how you want it. Otherwise, you can certainly replicate what I did. I'm going to take some black paint and add some shadowing into her hair, add some outlining here and there just to kind of work in any of those details. One thing to keep in mind is if you sculpt more and more depth into your work, like collarbone, muscle tone, etc etc you will have to do less outlining which depending on your preferences is either a good or a bad thing doesn't mean you can't do outlining but it just means it's a little little less necessary which i think is a good thing um outlining was another thing that used to be not something i avoided but something that i dreaded and if it was at the end of a design and i had worked so hard i always felt like my outlining could ruin it like if, if i'd made a line wrong it would just be the end of it and at some point I came to the realization that you can always erase an outline you can get rid of it fairly easily and so if it gets messed up during that stage it isn't the end of the world it can be fixed pretty pretty quickly and you might have to redo a little bit of your previous work but it won't be bad so we've got her outlines doing a little bit of outlining and shading around her legs around her arms going all the way up her body instead of outlining with black I'm going to be doing the shading with a darker shade of brown so kind of like a chocolate brown and I'm going to blend it out I'm not just going to leave those sharp lines so I'm going to do it a little bit more like I am creating contours rather than strict outlines I'm going to do the same thing on her chest around that collarbone blending things out just adjusting them slightly here and there as you are working on painting these or painting whatever acrylic art you're doing if you are using acrylic paint like I am then you'll find that you can kind of lay a line down rinse your brush very quickly and then go back through and blend it out if you're using acrylic paint you just have to remember that you have to work quickly if you're using a gel product you really have all the time until you flash cure it so it kind of depends on what system you're using, how rapidly it works. Sometimes when I'm doing things with gel paint, I will do a base outline around everything. And then after I have an outline kind of going everywhere, then I will go through and I will blend all of them out at once. That really isn't so much an option when you are working with acrylic paint as the paint will dry completely and you won't be able to blend it out. 
I'm going to take and I have some shading on her face. I'm going to also highlight her face. Instead of using straight white, I used a mix of white and brown together just so it wasn't quite so harsh with the white. And actually, if you just use white to highlight on a face like this, it'll end up looking a little bit, she'll end up looking a little ill, a little ghostly. It won't just brighten up the color underneath it. It'll kind of create a fog across the top. So you want to have just a brighter shade of whatever skin tone it is that you're using. That especially goes for darker skin tones. If you have any kind of skin tone that is even just like an olive down. If you, you don't want to highlight with white, you want to highlight with a tone that is brighter than the tone that you started with. So especially um, one thing that I also have done in the past that has been a huge mistake is use the wrong color of pink or red to add blush to or like to pinken up cheeks on my characters that I painted. You want to make sure that when you are picking a blush color regardless of the skin tone underneath but again most importantly for darker skin tones you don't have a white base. You want it to be almost like a jelly consistency. So when you're looking at your colors it can be neon and it won't turn out neon just as long as it doesn't have that white base because that'll make it look very sickly. And that's never what our goal is. I'm going to be adding Wonder Woman's lips. I'm going to go through and do some details on her eyes. I filled in her eyes with white. And then I'm going to go through with some black. And the only places I really wanted to outline with black on her is going to be around her hair. Just because the dark brown, the next closest best outline is going to be black. Not because I wanted it to have that really uh, intense dark line. But then the other places for, her, for the black outlines are going to be her eyebrows, around her eyes, inside her eyes, and her nose. You don't need black outlines anywhere else really brown will be sufficient. If you feel like you outlined with brown first and it wasn't enough, you can darken your brown a little bit, especially like around um, her skin anywhere. If it just didn't seem like it did anything, you might want to just try darkening your brown instead of doing a full black outline. It'll just look a little harsh and make her look slightly less feminine. And that's not what we we're going for. We want her to look pretty still. So after we have all of those paintings done, I added some pretty drastic highlights in her hair, make it look really shiny. I'm going to apply some glossy gel top coat over the background and then some matte top coat over Wonder Woman. And this design is all done. Comment in the comment section below something art related that you've always really struggled with. Like I said, for me, faces have always been kind of my number one just dreaded thing and more and more I have been forcing myself into it and I actually feel quite confident in them now. So that is a, I don't know, a glimmer of hope for anybody that's having a similar situation. I would love to know what you're struggling with and maybe I can help with the video and I will see you all next time. Bye.